Okay, John chapter 18. Moving along pretty good, John. Mm -hmm. uh, mine's titled on this, The Betrayal and Arrest of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, verse 1 said, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook of Sidron, uh, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. Uh, I understand this brook here. I'd never heard this before until a day or two ago when they would sacrifice the lambs blood would run out into some type of little reservoir and then there'd be a conduit that run down and, and it would run into this this brook and uh, no doubt as Jesus crossed this brook he would be reminded of his blood uh, would be shed for everybody yeah, and, uh, yeah. Uh, just a thought it's not, not really in scripture there but Good, good possibility. Remember, Jesus is somewhere between the upper room where they had the, the Passover, eat the Passover meal, and it seemed like after they left there, he'd be teaching different things and preparing his disciples for what was coming. Uh, as it continued on. And said Judas also which betrayed him knew the place. The place would be a garden. Uh, and somebody threw this thought out that man lost in the garden and the Son of God Conquered in the garden. Reclaimed. <laughs> I thought that was, that was kind of. Yeah. It says Judas knew the place here. He had been with the disciples, with Christ probably many times in this garden. This this was, uh, it don't say here, but uh, it just says place here. Uh, on the Mount of Olives and it would be the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. That's what the other uh, accounts of this uh, particular happening would be. But Judas knew where it was and, mm -hmm. and think about this. Jesus would go there often but how does Judas know that he's going to be there this time? It's not Judas knowing, it's Jesus knowing that Judas was coming. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and uh, his hour had come. I remember he, he prayed when he prayed. Uh, actually, I think it was 16 there. Uh, you know, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was actually the, the Lord praying. Remember he prayed. Pray for his disciples. He, he prayed for himself first, and his disciples, and he prayed for us. Uh -huh. And then uh, John doesn't mention this, but in this garden, Jesus prayed so hard and was under so much stress he that he sweated blood. But John doesn't mention that, but the other gospels do. So. Uh -huh. uh, no need for John to, to bring it out again, I don't guess. It says, for, oft, or for Jesus oft times resorted uh, there with his disciples. It was a place where when he was teaching in the temple, uh, he would go there and no doubt spend the night, camp out or whatever. Uh, remember he said the, the foxes have a hole and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head, so he wasn't 
he didn't have a place he could go to every night like we could travel we could go to a service and travel for miles but they couldn't do it back then they, they was uh, so uh, Jesus would no doubt spend the night here many times and it wasn't too far away from the Temple Mount so I was him walking distance of it and a garden like this would be a quiet place also mm -hmm. wouldn't be a lot of especially of the night I would think yeah. so Maybe a few animals or something, but <laughs> yeah, can go by. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priest and the, and the Pharisees, cometh uh, there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Um, we can give you an estimate it's just because there's nothing in detail here that tells you but this this could be between 300 and 600 men in this band here of men and you say well why that many well they tried to arrest him before but they couldn't do it he always disappeared on them mm -hmm. and they come with uh, uh, I think we find out there next it comes with clubs and 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 things uh weapons with well, torches and weapons here torches would allow them to go into the dark areas mm -hmm. and light it up if they had to do a manhunt they thought they was going to have to hunt him uh, it's it's amazing that judas started out with this many people this many men and not know I'm sure Jesus would be there uh -huh. but Jesus knew Jesus was coming so that's that's how they how they ended up there it says Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them whom seek ye <laughs> You know, we have a lot of people that does a lot of things and I think there's a murderer loose somewhere now. I don't remember where it was. But, uh, they're searching for him. He's been seen three or four times, but nobody's been able to catch him. But uh, it would be strange to go hunting for somebody and then come up to you and say, who are you, who are you looking for? <laughs> be very strange. But again, Jesus knew it was time. His hour had come, so he wasn't trying to hide or, or uh, disappear or anything, which he could have. And uh, so they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. This is the name that he usually, usually went by. Mm -hmm. They didn't have first and last name back then. They, they used a, a name for an individual and then where they were from. So... Uh, Jesus of Nazareth fit, fit Jesus there. Jesus saith unto them, I am. Mm -hmm. Now you may have he there, <laughs> but he's in italics. And Judas also, which betrayeth him, stood with them. Here we have Judas leading a large group of men that's armed and and uh, everything to come and arrest Jesus but he goes and meets them and said who are you, who are you looking for and they told him and said he said I am and something strange happened when he said that I am would mean that what he was God right what I am means and soon then as he had said unto them I am and, and got he here in italics but just I am uh, they went backwards and fell to the ground imagine a group of men with weapons torches 
Good thing it wasn't nothing to burn there because they'd probably set the place on fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that many men falling all at once. And no matter how many men there was, if there was, uh, I understand it could have been possibly a thousand there too. But, uh, six, three, six hundred was kind of an estimate. Uh, he could have wiped out the whole bunch mm -hmm. if, if it hadn't been time for him to, to do what he done, to, to uh, say, I am. So they didn't have enough people to take him, no matter how many, if they had a thousand, if he didn't want to give up to them. Because remember, many times they would try to uh, arrest him or try to, try to uh, take him over or whatever. He just disappeared out of their sight. They took him out one time to a rock cliff, going to throw him off, and he just disappeared. <laughs> so, if it hadn't been his hour, right. an hour means a period of time. It don't mean a, a 60 seconds, 60 minutes. Uh, it means a period of time. So, then he asked them again, "Whom seek ye?" And they said. Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I, uh, Jesus answered and said, I have told you that I am. I am He. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Now something strange is going on here. <laughs> have you ever seen officers or an army or or just an arresting officer listen to the person that they're going to arrest he's got this totally under control because said I have told you that I am said therefore you seek me let these go their way talking about the 11 uh -huh. disciples that's with him. So he's totally in control of every situation yeah. that's happening here. Uh, if it hadn't been his hour, he wouldn't have been there. Judas could have brought 10,000 people mm -hmm. it, and it still wouldn't work because he wouldn't have been there. And But he said that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. He was protecting his disciples mm -hmm. right here. His, his people that had walked with him. Whether they knew it or not he was, he was protecting them. But who had proclaimed these words of them which thou gavest? I have lost none. Remember when he prayed that prayer, he said, yeah. except the son of perdition. Yeah. So, but he was there too, wasn't he? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. <laughs> but not as a disciple, as a betrayer, actually. Yeah, he wasn't one. So he hadn't lost really any of them. Uh, Judas doing what he was doing was going to cause him serious problems. Uh, woe to the one that betrays the Son of Man. Yeah. So Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it. I understand there were at least two swords in the crowd. I don't know who had the other one, but mm -hmm. Peter had one. Drew it and it smote off the high priest's servant. 
and cut off his ear, cut off his right ear. The servant's name, name was Malchus, if I got that right. Uh, I've thought about this a lot. How would you, it says he's right ear, and we don't know where Peter was behind him, in front of him, or wherever he was. But how could you take a sword and and just cut a man's ear off? I've wondered about that a whole lot. <laughs> It'd be hard to do just without cutting him somewhere else, you know. Mm -hmm. It would take a certain amount of pressure for that sword to just cut that ear off. Yeah, not go farther down. Right. Either way, where he's in front of him or behind him, it still take a certain. Uh, amount of pressure and uh, this individual was a high priest servant it says uh, <coughs> Peter's going to meet his brother not too long past this <laughs> he says he's his brother then said Jesus unto Peter put up thy sword into thy sheep the cup which the Father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Peter, it's not time to fight. You, you're, you're definitely outnumbered. Peter didn't think things through a lot of times. <laughs> no. <laughs> he just jumped and did. <laughs> I admire him that, that that's good in a way because you do get more stuff done. It's like... When Jesus come to him walking on the water, Peter said, let me come to you. And, he, and Peter, or John, Jesus said, come. And Peter just got out of the boat and started walking on the water. The rest of them are still the on the dry wood. Yeah. At least dry on one side anyway, where they were. So uh, Peter just didn't think a lot of times before he'd, he would do stuff. Sometimes that pays off, but in most cases, it'll get you in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if Jesus hadn't protected Peter here, he could have been the fourth cross because uh -huh. this was a capital offense. Uh -huh. They could have put him on a cross also for that. But, but Jesus was still protecting him, still, still watching out for him. He said, the, the Father has given me a cup, and shall, shall I not drink it? He, he, he knew in detail every, every step it was going to take, all the trials and everything. And I hope when we get to them, I can bring them all out, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> uh, I understand the Jews tried him as three trials there, and then... And Pilate was actually three times there that, that he tried him. And uh, some interesting things about Pilate. Then the band and the captain and the officers and the Jews took Jesus and bound him. I can imagine what's going through the disciples' mind, right? Even though they'd been told, they didn't know in detail how everything was going to play out. He told them, he said, I'm going to be arrested and, and, and all those things and uh, at the hands of the Jews. And, and uh, he even, even told how they would put him to death. And I think we get into that a little bit later on here. Said they bound him. Why? Why, why would you need to bind somebody that had said, "Here I am"? Yeah. You know, basically, just, basically take me. They just didn't didn't think, but taking no chances, I guess. No, I'm thinking that was their, you know, they just wanted to act like they were all that. Yeah. <laughs> And led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas. Is that right? 
Caiaphas here. Which was the high priest that same year. Now they're getting ready to have some illegal trials. Because mm. remember, what the men that come to arrest him was carrying? Torches? Mm -hmm. You don't carry a torch out in the daytime, do you? Mm -hmm. So it was nighttime. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this whole night up until sometime in the morning was uh, trials. And it took him to Annas first and then Caiaphas or second, which was a high priest. And now Caiaphas was uh, he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. You remember that? That scripture? We said it's expedient that one man would die versus losing the whole nation. Mm -hmm. That was in John. Yeah. But he... He didn't realize that what he was saying was true, right. but not how he intended it. That's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was thinking it was going to save the save nation yeah. from the Romans, but he was really saving, going to, could save the nation uh, for salvation. Uh -huh. And many Jews did believe. Mm -hmm. And Peter's about ready to have a bad night. No. <laughs> he's, he's escaped being arrested because he cuts this man's ear off. Uh, John doesn't say what happened after he cut the man's ear off, but Jesus reached down, picked it up, and put it back on for him. I know. And then. <laughs> He just boggles the mind. And, but then, you know, they still took him away and yeah. wanted to kill him and wouldn't believe he was the Son of God. Right. Of course, that was the plan, but still. You can't, normal people don't just put your ear back on. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> Remember, and, and maybe this was the reason. Peter pulled his sword out and he said, I'll go to you to the dead. Mm -hmm. I'll stay with you to the dead. Mm -hmm. And remember Jesus told him, he said, you'll deny me three times before the cock crows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. I think this other disciple here is John because that's, that's the way he always presents himself in the book of John. Mm -hmm. That other disciple whom Jesus loved, sometimes he'd yeah. say that. Uh, that disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. Uh, John kind of staying with him here, mm -hmm. it seemed like. And evidently, John had some inside connections with the high priest where he wouldn't have been allowed to, to be in said, but Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple. Here we go again. So John goes out, says, which was known of the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. So if some lady was watching the door. Uh, I don't know how she'd guard the door, but uh, don't know if she had a guard but she was watching the door anyway she said she kept the door then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter art not thou also one of this man's disciples and that's what he said mm -hmm. I am not mm -hmm. I am not I'll never deny you Lord yeah but I am not one of his disciples. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put yourself in Peter's shoes here, you'd probably said the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people will say after the fact, and when they got time to analyze everything out, 
I would have done this or I would have done that. I would have done something else. You don't know what you'll do until you're put in that situation. That is absolutely the truth. <laughs> you can you just, say, I hope I wouldn't, but you right. don't know what you're going to yeah. do. I hope. I never deny him, but I can't tell you right now that, that I'll never. And then the servants and the officers, in verse 18, stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Said the, the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. They already had their mind of what they were going to do. Yeah. But they're trying to make some effort here uh, for a trial. And Jesus answered him. He said, I spoke openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple where the Jews always resort. In secret have I said nothing. Why are you asking me? In the next verse of 21 here said, Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. This is another thing. The high priest should have had some eyewitnesses here. And he don't have. So, Christ, other than his own words, has no way to defend himself. He don't have eyewitnesses there. So he, he tells them, said, uh, I've not said anything in secret. I've been open. I've been in synagogues. I've been in the temples. I've been out teaching in different places. Why, why are you asking me? Why askest thou me? Ask them which had heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. Many had heard his teaching. Mm -hmm. And after all, he had some disciples. They, they didn't, they wasn't arrested with him, so they didn't go with him. And that was Jesus protecting them at the time. So when he, in verse 22, said, so when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answers thou the high priest so? And Jesus answered him, said, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. He'd always spoke good, hadn't he? He'd always done everything right. What had he said that had them all stirred up? I am. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. And him saying, I am, he was saying, I am God. Mm -hmm. And now, Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. And they said, Therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? And here's the second time. He denied it and said, I am not. And one of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, really, uh -huh. whose ear... Peter cut off, and were he just some kin to him, or mm. his brother, or who, uh, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Yeah, I'd say a lot of them seen Peter at that time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't cut a guy's ear off in secret, do you? Uh -uh. Then Peter denied again three times. And immediately, the cock crew. 
Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early. It was early in the morning. They themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. <clears throat> this was a Gentile judgment hall, mm -hmm. or a judgment, a place of judgment. Uh, had they gone in, they couldn't eat the Passover that day because they would have been unclean. That's what it's, what it's talking about here. They would have been defiled. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring you against this man? Now, Pilate's in a bad situation here. Yes. Pilate's had problems up to this point. Uh, he was a governor over a certain territory and he kept everything calm and quiet and I understand Pilate had done a lot of things to irritate the Jews he made some graven images on poles and done just a bunch, bunch of different things that, that really irritated him and they ratted on him and he was, he was walking on thin ice mm -hmm. with the Romans. And I understand he was not a Roman. Oh, really? Yeah. I forget what nationality he was. It, they, they say it, but I can't remember who, who it was, what nationality it was, but he was not a Roman. He had married in to that and, and got this position, what I understand. It says Pilate went out, this is the reason he's coming out and going back in, coming out and going back in, <laughs> he's done that many times. Uh, and what accusation bring you against this man? They answered and said unto him, if he were not a malefactor or a criminal, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. They didn't answer the question, did they? Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Who's talking about a death sentence already? Huh? Well, that's what they said he was. That's the reason they brought him there. For the Gentiles to put him to death. Now, did they always obey their laws? How did they do capital punishment? Stoning. Stoning, Stoning right. When they wanted to, it seemed like. It didn't seem to make any difference about their law when they stoned Stephen, did it? Mm -hmm. And I think someone else was stoned too. I don't remember who it was, but stoned to death. So, uh, but they wanted they wanted the Gentiles, they wanted the Romans to put him to death. that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake signifying what death he should die. Right. What did he say about what death? If I be lifted up. When you stone, when somebody's stoned, they're not lifted up, are they? They're put down. Yes. So this is signifying he had to be crucified because that was the way that God seemed fit to have it to happen. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called 
Jesus and saith unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Where had he heard this at? Is that what they accused him of? Prior? I mean, is that, did somebody get the word of it? It doesn't say. Yeah. Jesus answered him, saying, Thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? How'd you come up with this, Pilate? Somebody tell you that I'm king of the Jews? And Pilate answered and said, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation of chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Why didn't he ask the Jews what he had done? Well, they, they wouldn't come in there for one thing. Right? No, they wouldn't come in to that spot. Well, they just said he was a malefactor. Yeah. And he was... He wouldn't pay Caesar and he was just causing trouble. Right. And that's probably the best thing because Pilate didn't want any more trouble, so. Right. <laughs> so Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from here or from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. And to this end was I born. For this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate, you say that I'm a king. And for this reason I did come into the world. Mm -hmm. But he never was crowned a king or was never made king. They wanted to make him king many times. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't time yet. For some reason, all the Jews back at that time, including all the disciples, had skipped the fact that Jesus had to suffer mm -hmm. and die. Uh, I understand even now uh, the Jewish people won't read Isaiah 53. Why? Because <laughs> it explains Christ. Mm -hmm. 700 years before He ever come. But if you don't want to present something, uh, sometimes today it'll just be ignored. It won't. They won't mention it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They just leave it out not important. Or if I report it, then it can look bad. So, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? You ever heard that? <laughs> There's a lot of very intelligent people don't know what the truth is. Where do we, where have we come up with a lot of our laws? Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. A lot of them come from the Bible. Sure. Sure do. And what is truth? God's Word. Yeah. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto him, to them, I find in him no fault at all. At all is in, in the italic there. So. Mm -hmm. I, I find no fault. He couldn't find any reason to put him to death. And there was no reason other than it was his hour. So he's going to try 
to get out of it here. <laughs> What's another reason that he didn't want to deal with Jesus? Didn't want to pronounce judgment. Well, his wife had told him, don't have anything to do with it. He had a dream, didn't he? <laughs> I had a dream, and it's not good. Yeah. So here he's coming out with something he thinks is might work. <laughs> but you have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? <laughs> yeah. Then cried they again, they all again, saying, not this man, but Ravis. And Ravis was a robber, according to John. Rav Ravis was supposed to be punished, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. But he was turned loose. Jesus, I understand, took his place. Uh, we'll stop right there and uh